Welcome to Sun City News. I'm your host, Noma Taylor, and here are some of the stories we're covering for you this week. We have a safety tip about sharing the road. The executive director of Second Helping visits us here in our studio. And some observations on the last three months. Those stories and more coming up. Sun City News starts now. From our studios in Pinckney Hall, this is Sun City News with Norma Taylor. Entertainment News with Randy Selman. Sports with Doug Wright. And the entire Sun City News team covering your community and the South Carolina Low Country. Here are four tips for sharing the road with pedestrians and bicyclists in Sun City. Practice driveway safety. Take your time. You should check your mirrors first, but do not rely solely on them. Physically turn and look behind your car. Be aware in parking lots. Parking lots are breeding grounds for accidents because they're full of both cars and pedestrians and it is often unclear on who should go. Keep your guard up when you navigate through any parking lot. Remember that our parking lot speed limit is 10 miles per hour. Lily Coleman, Executive Director of Second Helpings, is in our studio today to talk about this very worthy organization. Well, welcome, Lily, to Sun City News. Thank you. We're so excited to be here. Now, how has Second Helpings operated with their volunteers with, with all the challenges with COVID? Well, right away, we let our volunteers know that we would understand if they didn't want to be on the truck because they had a health condition or someone in their family did. So we put that notice out right away. Um, some of our volunteers chose not to stay uh, active. But we have a lot of great, amazing volunteers that are staying active, so we're trying to coordinate it. At first, we had less food to pick up because there was less food available at the grocery stores because a lot of people were buying the groceries. So we scheduled routes so that we made sure that we were meeting the needs of the agencies that were staying open. Okay. Now, what are the requirements to be a volunteer on the truck? That truck is a big truck. I've seen it, <laughs> it sure in the parking is. lot. Yeah, it sure is. Um, well, you have to be strong uh, enough to pick up a 40 pound box and um, just have a lot of passion and want to help out with the rescuing food and making sure we don't waste food. So basically that's it. Just You could do it for one day a month. You can do it one day a week. You can do it with a partner if you want to. Of course, right now we're saying only two in the front of the truck. And if there's more than two on a crew, the third one has to follow them. But it's just really wanting to have a passion and they are a very social group. So they get to make a lot of friends. Okay. Well, besides the driving the truck, what other volunteers do you need? Wow, we always need volunteers that are interested in serving on committees. Uh, we want to do a, um, a logistic study of uh, the agencies because we're getting a lot of requests because of COVID, especially out in Hampton County of agencies that want to join our network of 55 agencies. And we want to see if we have enough food. And we do know that we're giving too much food to one or two agencies because they're always willing to take the food. And there's some agencies that are closed. So we want to do a study. So somebody who's interested in logistics or program development, um, special events, speakers bureau. Um, and then uh, Joe O'Hare, one of the residents here at Sun City, just became a board member. And he's cheering up our volunteer committee. We always have Sun City people are always They're there. amazing. They're always there volunteering. Yes, they are. Now, what have you done differently to meet the needs of your agencies and the people that need the food? Well, we're, we're trying to make sure that we, one of the main things we're doing is we're getting a lot of donations and a lot of grants to try to purchase food. So if there's not enough food from the grocery stores, we look for the gaps and then we're purchasing the food. And then we have what we call no contact uh, exchange so we have a truck full of food and we invite the agencies to come to that one spot and pick up their food and take it back to their agencies. So 
we've probably got uh, about $60,000 through April of next year, which we know is not enough money, but it's at least get them some bot food once a month. So we're doing that. We're working with our agencies to make sure that they're staying healthy and we're making sure that our volunteers are staying healthy by having a lot of safety requirements like a mask. Yeah, oh, yeah. the world has changed. It right? sure has. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Lily, and telling us about your worthy, very worthy organization. Much, much success and much luck, and I hope you continue to get a lot of food and a lot of money. Well, we're worthy because there's so many amazing Sun City volunteers, so thank you very much. We're operating because of you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, the past few months. What have I been doing to occupy my time? Playing games on my iPhone. Walking to keep active. Card games. Searching for a movie on Prime. Playing solitaire. Riding my bike. More computer games. Oh, those jigsaw puzzles. Catching up in email. Facebook, Instagram, walking the same paths. Oh, more games. Watching a streaming series in one day. More bike riding. Talking with my sister. More walking. More games. More time alone. The days go on hour by hour. When we come back, we have an update on Oliver the service dog. We give you a preview of what's coming up on ION. The Breeze and Snapshots. Reporter Chris Chase went to a very interesting wedding. So don't go away. We'll be right back after these important messages. Oliver is growing into quite the canine companion. Chris Chase talked to Ann Redless about his progress. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I have really missed Oliver. Let's see what he's up to. So what has Oliver been up to? <laughs> Not a whole lot here either. <laughs> um, I mean, we, we've been kind of secluded here too and not able to go out into the public and practice our um, public discipline and such. So we've kind of, kind of missed that because I really enjoy taking them to the supermarket and church and, um, you know, where we go to the beach. We did go to the beach right before this all happened for his first time on the beach. And, that was fun. So, um, so has he learned anything new? Well, we have been working on a few more um, commands. He will be ten months old on the fourth of June. Mm -hmm. So there's a few more commands that open up once we um, hit that ten month. So he's been working on visit, which is me sitting in a chair and just him putting his la head on my lap, and then um, lap is actually coming up on his front legs up on onto my lap also and under is another command that um, we'll, we are working on and hopefully June 15th we will be able to go back to Petco for our classes to finish those out and I know she was going to work on the under command with the with the, the group. And can you remind me when is he going to be finished with this? Um, February is turn-in time um, I think they'll probably be on course with that because the puppies that were turned in in May did get turned in. Of course, they were minus the events and the uh, ceremony and that type of thing. But I just saw an email from Canine Companions and the staff and everybody made up signs to welcome the puppies into uh, training and such. So they tried to... Um, make it as special as they could, but it, it's a little different right now. So hopefully 
we'll be able to get back to a, a gathering and such. I was wondering, are they going to extend it because of this coronavirus and you've been backed up a little bit? Yeah, I haven't team? heard that. I think they'll be okay if um, they can still keep turning them in on schedule. So the next schedule turn-in would be August. There's another one in November and then his in February. So, um, but, uh, I mean, even Canine Companion, Oliver, sit, sit. Even Canine Companions, they had to shut down all the six regions and all the puppies that were there went home with the trainers and with volunteer uh, puppy people. So I hear they're just all coming back on campus now and practicing the best practices of keeping separate, but um, the training continues. So. Well, let's hope next month when we come back, we'll have lots more to talk about. That's right. And we'll be out in public a little bit more. So, Here's what's coming up on some of our other Sun City programs. You're in for a treat. Tour the Sales Slash Welcome Center with Georgia Lash and the six new models with Joanne Hines on this month's In Our Neighborhoods. Hey Margie, welcome back to The Breeze. We are socially distant, but uh, how are we going to get Tina involved? Oh, we will for sure, let me tell you that. We all know how much you love social media and technology, so we'll have to be creative in working that out. I guess, but uh, let's talk for a minute about our monthly edition for July. I thought we had a great discussion. I did too. You know many of us have experienced some form of both professionally and personally the issue of ageism, and we brought up some really good points. And it was our last episode before we have to get creative. Right, and we hope the viewers really enjoy the July edition of The Breeze. On Low Country Snapshots, Norma Taylor acquaints us with her journey. A little girl with dreams of being a movie star, her successful marketing and advertising career in New York City, which, by the way, often placed her among the movie stars and musicians. Also, what shaped her career and what may be on the horizon. And here's a clip of April's Low Country Snapshots featuring Norma Taylor. Oprah and Judge Judy and Alex Trebek. And I do have pictures with the late John Ritter. Uh, Johnny Depp, when he first started his career on 21 Jump Street at Fox, I have his picture. Very, very shy at the time, too. Tim Allen from Home Improvement and uh, MacIver, which was Richard Dean Anderson. Um, Kevin James, um, loads, loads of them. Even have the Simpsons and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And <laughs> um, they would all be at the um, celebrations of the upfronts, what they call in the network, in the television field. So they would stay and you would have your picture taken with. Love is in the air and nowhere was it more prevalent than in Heron's Point recently. Laura Wenban and Tim Puko took their vows. Reporter Chris Chase was at the wedding to tell you all about it. In the middle of all this chaos and upheaval, something wonderful happened in Sun City, in Heron's Point. Two people got married. Love prevailed. Now, Tim, how did you meet lovely Laura? Well, I met through Match.com. And Match.com uh, put us together but we knew each other for about six weeks, and then I took off for Australia for a month to a planned trip to visit relatives. Testing the time. Testing the time, see if it was gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. And it did, yes. Now, Laura, I have to ask you, in the midst of all of this, did you ever think of postponing the wedding? Oh, sure, we did think, we did say we're not gonna go through with this because Joining our families together was an important feature of our ceremony. But then we were watching the Today Show, and they were featuring all these coronavirus weddings. Mm -hmm. And we said, oh, we could do that. And we spoke to our families, and they said, we just want you to be happy. And yes, that sounds like a great idea. Do it. And so we planned our wedding around what we saw on TV. And you did a beautiful job. Let's take a look at the wedding.
Rings mark the beginning of a long journey together, reminding you of the love that you have for each other. Always see the best in each other and each day that you are together. Let the fullness of the beauty of your never-ending love that you have for one another be evident. Still more to come on Sun City News. Randy Selman checks out entertainment and interviews Judy Owens about ballroom dancing. Reporter Doug Wright brings us updated on outdoor sports and the new normal at Sun City. We'll return after some messages from our sponsors. Now let's go to Randy Selman for some entertainment news. Here are some fun things for you to do this month in Sun City. You can enjoy a quick dip in the pool while listening to some live music. So grab your towel, some cool and delicious refreshments, and head over to the lake house pool and dive right in. Music begins at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, July 15th and the 22nd. This is a free event, so don't miss it. Another way to chill out is to pick up tickets and attend the Music in the Square. On Friday, July 24th, you can catch some live music and socialize with friends. Tickets are $15 and they're available at Lifestyle Services or online. For both of these events, you are asked to bring your own chair and practice safety while social distancing and try to wear a mask. I'm here with Judy Owen, president of the Ballroom Club here in Sun City. Hi, Judy. It's glad to, I'm glad to see you again. Good, Randy. I'm glad to see you, too. This is a great time to get together here and talk about ballroom. Well, it's been some time since we've spoken. Um, how were you able to keep the ballroom club active and during all our downtime? Oh, Randy, you know, it was kind of a challenge. We had to really get creative. And, you know, at first I thought, oh, I can take a couple of weeks off. And then I was reminded, no, this may be more than a couple of weeks. And so we got creative. We began to create videos. So each week we would post videos out to our membership. And we did that by working with our partners, our professional partners at Hilton Head Ballroom. So they created little 30 minute videos and we sent out that people could do, you know, just in their living rooms. It was a great way to stay connected and we'd have over 300 hits on them, which means people were watching them over and over again. So obviously it was really popular. And those went into what we call our happy feed, our newsletter that goes out weekly to our membership. And within that newsletter, beside the videos, we also did membership stories. So each week a couple of members would write to me and tell me what they were doing and how they were spending their time. So one great way to stay connected is in the stories of our lives. So that was something that we did. And of course the board kept up with Zoom. You know, everybody's Zooming these days. And uh, so we were too. So we stayed connected in that way as well. well are you able to meet with the ballroom now that the rooms are open? You know, it's been exciting. Yes, we were. Last Friday was our first time. We had no idea what to expect. Um, but we had 35 people in attendance. Um, most were wearing their masks and for the whole evening, which was great. Um, we taught our lessons a little bit differently, which actually was actually wonderful. Our instructor was up on the stage and then we were scattered socially distanced on the ballroom floor. So it was, it was a great event. So, we, so it was great. And we had 15 different tables set up, so we had more tables so people can spread out during their time that they're sitting. Um, they don't have to stand with, together with someone and go into closed dance partnership for dancing. Um, so it's been exciting. Again, creative, different, but it's working well. So you were not with your partner. You stood in a line. We in stood way? kind of, um, kind of scattered around. Yeah, you didn't have to be with the partner. You know, and what we fi are finding is that we become better dancers because we're totally dependent on ourselves. We have to. Um, find our, our sense of balance and all these things work really well for our physical development as well. Well, that's great. Um, so when do you meet and what time and who's invited? Anybody can come. You know, we've had a great year of growth. It's been great. Even Friday night, we had two new members join. Who would have suspected that at this time period? Um, but you can come on Friday, on Friday nights at 7 o'clock right here in Pinkney Hall in the ballroom. And we have a lesson from 7 until um, 8. And then at 8 o'clock, we start our social dancing. 
Well, that sounds great. Well, thanks so much for taking some time to meet with us today. I'm Randy Selman, and that's your entertainment report. Remember, life is entertaining, so don't miss the show. And now here's Doug Wright with the sports report. Outdoor activities have resumed here in Sun City, and our various sports venues are humming. Golf and six wicket croquet players have enthusiastically embraced the new normal, as have golfers and the Sun City Tennis Association membership. Men's and Women's Golf Association have resumed weekly schedules and tournament play with new rules to ensure social distancing before teeing off, on the course, and afterwards. No more shotgun starts or group gatherings for the moment, but the competition and camaraderie among foursomes remain. Also, the Sun City Tennis Association has resumed play, and members are justifiably proud of improvements made to the facilities. We spoke to Association President Chris Scott about these changes, the new normal for tennis, and upcoming events. Well, Chris, it's not exactly a uh, Chamber of Commerce day for tennis, but uh, we are at the uh, tennis facility over here on the south side. Uh, was there an enthusiastic return? And uh, tell us a little bit about the improvements that were made. Great. Um, that's a great question. Uh, with all the improvements, uh, I believe the Community Association spent nearly three quarters of a million dollars. And with that, they redid all of our courts, new material, new fencing, replaced the water, watering system. So it was a complete overhaul of our system here on the south side. And on the north side, in addition, they added two new courts. So we have a total now of 16 courts. Well, Chris, we thank you for your time today. I'll tell you that uh, managing a club of some 650 members can't be easy. and. Uh, we appreciate your time and all that's going on over here. Okay, well, thank you very much, and we're um, quite excited about our facility, the number one tennis facility in the southeast, Sun City. Stay tuned for more updates next week. Doug Wright, Sun City Sports. Well, that's your news update for this week. Thank you for watching. We invite you to check out Sun City TV's weekly program schedule in Sensations Magazine. And now check highlights and alerts on Twitter at SunCityTVHHI. Also, email us at SunCityTVHH at gmail.com. Now to see extended coverage of your favorite news segments, tune into Extra. Check the current Sensations magazines for daily times. And make sure you tune in next week to find out all the news that's happening in our community. In the meantime, I hope your week is full of only good news. For Sun City News, I'm Norma Taylor, and I'll see you next week.